Shooting USA is brought to you by Hornady Security and the new Ammo Cabinet. Keep your ammunition secure and organized and free up room in your gun safe with the modular Ammo Cabinet by Hornady Security. Welcome again to the Shooting USA YouTube channel. We're glad you're here. We have a new way for you to see full length current Shooting USA episodes. We now have a Patreon. There are two years worth of episodes there waiting for you in addition to the Shooting USA watch along videos. We've done one with Nils Jonasson and we have several scheduled as new shows are released. There's a link in this video's description. Now, here's the content. The action shooting bays at the CMP Talladega Marksmanship Park are full as the 20 unique courses of fire await more than 400 competitors who've made the journey to the USPSA Low Cap Nationals. Every match we hold at CMP Talladega fills to capacity. We've been uh, very fortunate to have this partnership. It's a beautiful facility, uh, generally beautiful weather. Uh, it's built with shooting in mind and they're very accommodating. I look to see us here for many events in the future. A full match with competitors looking to test their skill. Over 400 competitors compete in this match, all using firearms with 10 or less rounds in the magazine. Jake Martins is the match director, and like Mike, he is shooting this national and enjoying his stage designs. Well, as the guy who designed the stages, it'd be great if I could shoot them too. Uh, <laughs> No, it's really fun. It's been a fun match. The stages worked out really well. I've had a lot of people compliment the design and the way they flow, so it's been great. Uh, I'd like to shoot most of it again. Just like Jake, I've got several stages that I'd like to do over. The plan went terribly after the gun malfunction. Prior to that, the plan was perfect. We're having fun, that's the point, right? For the majority of the competitors here, it is about having fun. But for the top 1%, it's about winning a national title. And the key to that pursuit will be speed and accuracy, as this is hit factor scoring. Your score is derived by the number of target points you earn divided by the time in seconds it takes to complete the course of fire. That generates the hit factor, or points per second. The highest hit factor for a stage earns full match points and everyone else gets a percentage of the match points depending on how their hit factor stacks up. Steel targets are five points and must fall to score. The paper targets score like this. For major and minor, it's five points for A zone hits. Major scores four for C, minor scores three. And major gets two for a D, minor gets one point. This is important for the production division shooters. All score minor. Limited 10 scores major, and single stack has a choice. Score major with a capacity limit of eight per magazine, or score minor but get 10 rounds in the mag. Either way, competitors must make every shot count. Testing accuracy, power, and speed is paramount. I'd say the overall theme is accountability, uh, with you having to really take accountability for every shot you fire and what position you fire it from. And speaking of positions, one stage for the top dogs comes up early in the three days of competition, stage three. And as you would imagine, there are several ways to solve this shooting problem. This is stage three of the 2021 low cap USPSA low cap nationals. Uh, it's a 32 round stage, 16 targets, two hits per target. Uh, and there are about 25 different ways to run this stage. And so far we've seen about 20 of them. For the single stack super squad, major power factor scoring is the way to win. And that also means eight rounds in the magazine. It's vital that a plan goes together and John Vlieger makes it look easy. Even with an adjustment in his plan, 19.67 seconds and 147 target points yields a hit factor just under 7.5. Well, uh, you have a memory component, especially working with reduced capacity mag. Uh, I lost my uh, target I was coming in on, on the second or third position, and it kind of threw a loop. You have to be able to think on your feet and adjust accordingly. The production division shooters have 10 rounds in the mags, and that will help a little navigating this longer course of fire. For the USAMU's Jacob Hetherington, 
Adjusting to a new pistol with a new magwell design is taking time, and time equals points. I was not looking at my reload, and I was focused on nailing the position, so I wasn't catching the magwell. I just switched to pistols, and the magwell's way smaller than I'm used to, so I had some issues there. Uh, thankfully, it finally got in after about you know, 10 points wasted of, of time, so, but got it, so we'll see how it keeps going. For defending production national champion Mason Lane, this stage is a massive success. 152 target points in a blistering 17.6 seconds yields a best for the match hit factor of 8.60. A little loose on points, but I think the time was there. I think that's going to be kind of be the strategy for a lot of this, just trying to take it easy and not overdo it, especially days one and two. Well, the match is just getting started, and the front runners are working for position. Plus, there are some very fast courses of fire yet to be shot, one that will bring a winning hit factor well into the teens. Our coverage from the 2021 USPSA Low Cap Nationals continues next. Shooting USA is brought to you by Smith & Wesson and the M&P9 Shield Plus with 13 plus one capacity in the same thin lightweight design that has made the Shield the number one choice for concealed carry. There are four divisions competing at the low cap nationals. The limited 10 division, these are the fully enhanced limited guns downloading the magazines to 10 rounds. The production division, essentially out-of-the-box factory guns, again downloading the mags to 10. 9mm is the primary caliber here, and that means minor scoring. The single stack division, this is the origin of practical shooting. 1911 designs, 8 rounds in the magazine for major, 10 rounds for minor power factor scoring. And then the revolver division primarily made up of eight round guns reloading with moon clips. Eight rounds, minor power factor scoring. This requires a special type of practical shooter. Those unique individuals that select the wheel gun at this national are navigating one of the few stages that doesn't really put them at a disadvantage, as long as they don't have any makeup shots along the way. Michael Pogge takes 76 of the possible 80 target points in 11.35 seconds. That was a good one. No standing reload at the end. Aim hard at those poppers and make the best, most out of it. For the production front runners, the lightning fast stage four awaits. 12 paper targets offer 120 points. Everyone on this squad will be sub 10 seconds, and it will be the target hits that make the difference. What Phil Strader lacks in mobility, he will make up for with accuracy. And his plus 14 hit factor is the evidence. The best combination of mobility and accuracy will come from J.J. Ricaza. This will be his first stage win at a national with a production gun. I won the stage. And he does it with a 14.33 hit factor. Moving ahead, the single stack super squad has arrived on the 150 point stage nine. Lateral movement and a mix of steel and paper targets here will demand an accurately executed stage plan. Rob Latham's game is built on accuracy. It keeps him competitive even in his 40th year of nationals. This is the 40th year that I've shot uh, IPSC type competition. My first USPSA, it wasn't USPSA, it was IPSC USA was in 1981, so 40 years ago I started this. Half the kids I'm shooting against weren't born when I shot. One of those shooters is Elias Frangoulis. Stage nine is a good one for Elias. Gun problems have cost him on other stages, but not here. 142 target points in 20.18 seconds 
makes him the only single stack shooter to post a seven hit factor. Now it's the production squad. And first on the stage, Nils Jonasson. Steal first at position one, one standing. And the pickup doesn't take it down. More steal at position two fall. And he's through the final positions, but with that steal standing, it's gonna hurt his score. He's got two hits in the scoring zone and he's called for a calibration shot from assistant range master, Kyle Stevens. So this is where you hope and pray something's messed up with the popper and when they calibrate it, it doesn't fall either. Well, I don't really wanna eat a miss on steel, but I've got two decent hits on the, uh, the scoring zone of the plate. So hopefully it calibrates correctly and I get a reshoot. The calibration shot doesn't knock the target down. Nils is granted a reshoot. But first, it's JJ. This is his type of stage. Speed on the feet here is key. His factory prep Beretta 92X is relatively new to the production division, but in JJ's hands, it's competitive. His last shot flies at 19.19. I trusted my shooting, and then there was only a couple of shots that I really needed to pay attention to. And once I executed that, kind of tried to turn it on a little bit. Pushing the speed paid off on the timer, but cost him a little on the targets. Jacob Hetherington is next to last on the stage for the squad, and that means he has watched how everyone else has solved this shooting problem. Uh, yeah, so towards the end of the rotation, I can uh, watch how everyone shoots and get the best plan, and if they all shoot less risky, I can shoot the riskier plan and uh, gain more points. The risk for Jacob is tackling the stage in three positions with only two reloads. It's a 30-round course. His plus one on the start means any more than one extra shot, and he'll be faced with a standing reload. Uh, well, I shot the faster but way more risky way, and I skated through. I threw one Delta and had like one or two, three more Charlies, and I'm happy with how it went. Now it's Nils and his reshoot. And in the first position, he's got a pickup and slide lock reload. Now he has to be perfect. Second reload. And he's got it. That was close. Watch again from the cable cam. Position one, 11 shots. Reload into position two, that's 10. Final reload. And 10 again, ending on slide lock. So there are a little bit better points on this run than the first run, but the significant part is the risky portion with the steel went well. That successful reshoot is vital for Nils, giving him full match points for the valuable stage nine. But coming up, the national titles are still up for grabs, and there are plenty of high value stages left to be shot at the USPSA low cap nationals. Tested, selected, and fielded by a specialized group within the U.S. DOD, the 6mm ARC is purpose-built to achieve unmatched performance never before delivered from the AR-15 platform. The 6mm ARC is suitable for a variety of applications from personal defense, match shooting, as well as hunting. Designed to meet the demanding needs of the world's toughest critics, the 6mm ARC, a truly advanced rifle cartridge from Hornady. Shooting USA is brought to you by Les Fair Customs 1911s, hand fitted to perfection because you'll accept nothing less. And by Hornady, accurate, deadly, dependable. The stage designs at this national are diverse and challenging for shooters of all skill levels, from club level to grandmasters alike. And there are opportunities to push in pursuit of every last match point as the final day of competition begins. Stage 13 is a quick 75 point stage with two shooting boxes and two arrays. The big steel in the back activates a hardcover tip out target that goes away. Make your shots in time or you have to go back to the first box. Bryce Dupuy leaves the small steel to catch that disappearing target. It's a smart pickup on the fly for the young shooter making his first appearance on the Super Squad. 
There's a little more stress than shooting on a normal squad, but I mean, if I want to compete with the top guys, I have to be here. The top production division performance comes from J.J. Ricasa. Speed between the positions and accuracy on steel is the difference. 71 target points in 7.19 puts his hit factor almost to 10. Top limited 10 division performance will come from Christian Seiler. He's quick on the steal and almost has to wait for that dropout target. Did a really controlled run here, really happy with it, and got away. You're not going to win the match here, but you could definitely lose the match here. So nice and controlled, and we're on to the next one. Well, the next one for Christian will be another standout performance. Stage 17 is 80 points with a no penalty drop turn target. Christian grabs 79 target points in an astounding 6.17 seconds, locking up the limited 10 championship. I really liked it. Everything was on time, caught everything with perfect timing, and a really good stage in the end, so really liking it. Stand by. Next door on stage 18, the single stack race has a familiar name at the front, Rob Latham. Rob has put together a consistent series of performances that will earn him another single stack championship. The long field course doesn't favor him in terms of mobility, but he makes his way through. Well, my knee is hurting a lot, so I'm kind of only going to move so fast and not fall down right now. But uh, eh, that's the worst one today for me. John McLean is making a late push for the podium in the single stack race, and stage 18 will help him in that effort. Like Rob, John works the stage right to left, but he is faster to the final position. Last shot flies at 20.65, 137 target points, gives John a hit factor of 6.63. Next on stage 18 is the production division, and there is now a race for the top that is too close to call. JJ Ricasa is fighting his way back from a difficult start to the final day. Every match point now has to be his. Stage 18 is solid. JJ's hit factor is 7.84. That went well. Um, I tried to go for it and push a little bit on that throttle, taking some chances that shoot targets in the move because I'm behind points. Let's make it respectable and chase pretty hard. Nils is leading the race to the finish, but that doesn't mean he is shooting safe. He knows he has a lead, but he still has to shoot to win. Even so, stage 18 will give some of the lead back to JJ. Nils' hit factor is a disappointing 6.09. Yeah, I mean, I had a couple makeups in the back of the seal, and I dropped a couple more Charlies than I'd like. But right now, I'm just trying to hold it through the last couple stages and see where everything lies out. The end of the production national championship race will happen on the split bay stages 19 and 20. Two very different courses of fire. Stage 19 is an 80-point short field course with a clamshell target that requires timing, and JJ nails that. His time is 8.42, and there is one hit on that clamshell target that needs a closer look. It's a Charlie, his only one for the stage. Now it's Nils, and he feels the pressure from JJ. He's got an extra there. Final position, activator. He's back to the clamshell just in time. The other stage in this split bay is also 80 points. One shot each, reload, and one shot each support hand. And this will be another stage win for JJ. 7.93 seconds is mind boggling on this stage. I think I can make up maybe 10 points there. Here, that delta is going to hurt a little bit. That's my wild guess, unless something tragic happens, like he bobbles a reload, which could happen. Now it's Nils. His pace is measured next to JJ, but he has to have the hits. His time of 10.06 is safe, and JJ knows it. It's just enough to give Nils the win. Well, as expected, Nils Jonasson is the production division national champion. JJ won the last four stages outright, but in the end, he's 53 hundredths of a match point short. Mason Lane rounds out the podium.
In the revolver division, it's Michael Pogge. Higby and Wolf are second and third. The limited 10 division is all Christian Seiler, more than 125 points ahead of second place. And then the single stack division, where the great one, Rob Latham, takes an astounding 29th USPSA national title, his eighth in single stack. Elias hangs on for second, and John McClain makes his first appearance on the podium in the division.